Hey fellow FODMAPers, it's Megan Marie from WoodyEmory.com. Welcome to another snack session. So I love popcorn and I was um, kind of upset when butter really started to make me um, sick. I don't know if you've ever um, gotten sick from movie popcorn. I think that's something everyone has experienced in their life because it's just so oily and so buttery. And I love popcorn so much and it's such a nice snack to have, um, but it's just the pre-bagged popcorn that you pop in your microwave at home is really not all that healthy for you. And years ago, a friend of mine turned me on to popping your own popcorn and just using oil and salt. And I thought, that sounds like a lot of work. Um, but I had talked to my mom about it. And of course she watches like the QVC commercials and found this popcorn popper. Um, so I'll link to this in the description. Perfect for making popcorn. And then I just buy popcorn kernels and then you pour some in here and then you put it in the microwave for about two minutes, two minutes and 10 seconds. It does have these perforated holes in the um, lid. So if you really, really like butter, you can put some butter in the top and then as the popcorn pops and it spins in the microwave and the butter starts to heat up, it's coating the uh, popcorn in butter. I prefer to use oil and salt. You have to be careful with how much oil and how much butter you use. You can tolerate usually about a tablespoon of butter on the low FODMAP diet. Um, I usually go less than that because it's really hard for me to tolerate. Um, as far as oil goes, the fat and oil can trigger IBS symptoms and I definitely experienced that. So I try to use about a tablespoon and I just um, drizzle, drizzle it on and shake it up and then um, put some salt and it's delicious. You just pour some of these in and then voila, you have a decent snack. My last product recommendation for you are Good Pop. So Good Pops are popsicles. They are dairy free and I know that they have um, some gluten free options too because they also have a strawberry shortcake that I didn't buy because they were kind of expensive. It was about $6 and um, you get four of these popsicles, so a little pricey, just like everything else that is gluten and dairy free. Um, but they're actually supposed to be better for you, lower sugar and lower calories. So um, for one popsicle, it's only 90 calories and it only has 10 grams of sugar, which is pretty amazing because most popsicles are closer to 20 grams of sugar. Um, and that's a lot of sugar. So if I'm eating a popsicle, I just want something that's refreshing, um, not looking for something that's going to be really heavy um, or anything that has like a ton of sugar and just kind of leaves that like film on your teeth that you get when you eat something that is just like a ton of refined sugar. But these are so good. Um, I was actually turned on to Good Pops because my nephew eats them and um, they are, you know, just regular popsicle um, and they do have cream in the middle. These are um, cream sickles basically like knockoff version. They call them orange and cream and um, I have been really craving cream sickles because it's just one of those things from my childhood and when summer comes around I really want popsicles. Um, that's kind of one of the things that I think about uh, but can never find any and I just found these at Harris Teeter this past weekend and was thrilled uh, because I was having a hard time finding good pops in stores. Um, they use coconut cream, I think, like in, in these, it, you can definitely tell it's orange juice and coconut cream. Um, those two flavors really come out. I know orange juice can be high in FODMAPs. You can typically have probably about half a glass. Um, oranges don't bother me, orange juice doesn't bother me, uh, but it could bother you. And so just be careful. I don't think in one popsicle you're gonna get enough orange juice. It's not gonna be like, you know, half a glass worth, obviously. But the one thing I did notice about the cream is it's more ice than it is creamy. So it doesn't like melt like a normal popsicle would, like normal ice cream would. Um, it actually was just pretty solid and it took me a while to actually finish the popsicle. I think, the, you know, overall it was, it was pretty good. I haven't tried the other flavors. I think for these specifically, 
I would give them a 3 out of 5. Uh, it's nice to have the option to eat a creamsicle again, but at the same time, it wasn't um, so good that I'm running back to the freezer to grab another one. The other thing that I would caution about these popsicles is if you're going to go um, buy a different flavor and I mean really this goes for any popsicle but you have to be really careful about the types of flavors that you get because we all know that fruit can be high in FODMAPs depending on the fruit and when it's concentrated made out of like fruit juice then it becomes even higher FODMAP or the potential for them to have higher FODMAPs increases because it's concentrated juice. So I would definitely be very cautious. Thanks for joining for another snack session and make sure that you like and subscribe. Be sure to check out woodyandmarie.com and woodyandmarie.com slash products for more product recommendations just like these.